Hi guys, it's Sophie. I'm going to be making a video today that I've made a long time ago and it's going to be revisiting something I made when my channel was just starting out. So the video I'm talking about is um, classics and book snobbery, um, which is a video that I will link. Um, that I spoke about when I was talking about how I feel about classics and why I edge away from them and why I have done for a very long time. Um, but just before I get into that, I'm going to tell you kind of what's brought all this about. Um, so I downloaded the Scribd app in place of my Audible app because I just wasn't getting enough books for my money from Audible it felt like um, and I was kind of wanted to have more in that um, I commute for two hours every day when I go to work and I listen to audiobooks but they didn't last me like the whole month um, and I was getting a little bit frustrated that then I was running out of stuff to listen to um, and someone suggested Scribd. So I downloaded Scribd and I've listened to a few like books that aren't classics on Scribd, um, but I went through them and for some reason I decided to listen to an Agatha Christie novel which I'd never listened to before um, and I listened to The Mysterious Affair of Styles which is the first one um, of the Poirot series and I really liked it um, and it was just kind of Agatha Christie was popping up all over the place so I thought that's a good idea I'll do that and it kind of feels like it's free um, in that you only pay like one fee per month but you can listen to as many books as you want. Um, and after that I was like I wonder what other like older books they have on there um, because there were some of the more modern books that I was kind of interested in but wasn't like dying to get to um, and I decided to read Jane Eyre or listen to Jane Eyre, I have physical copies here too. So this is where this all started from um, and I've listened to the whole of Jane Eyre on audiobook, um, I've also listened to Pride and Prejudice though so my physical copy hasn't turned up yet. Um, I've listened to Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte and I'm halfway, well more than halfway through, um, The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. So there's kind of four like heavy hitter Victorian classics. Um, I've listened to pretty much back to back um, and that's been the majority of my reading this month. So I know volume wise it's not that much, like if you look at those three books together. It's not massive, I mean I know the Pride and Prejudice tack on the end as well, um, but most of my book has, most of my reading, sorry, this month has been audiobooks. Um, and that's partly because I've been cross-stitching while I've been doing it, I've been loving it, I've done a black and white like monochrome or um, anatomical heart, it's beautiful. Um, and I've been doing that and I've been doing that in the evenings and listening to it in the car, so I've been listening to a lot of audio content this month. Um, and the reason I decided to kind of do this is like twofold and I think if you haven't watched the old video which many of you probably haven't because it is really old you can go and watch that and understand a little bit about my relationship with classics um, in a kind of nutshell I read a lot um, of the kind of like Victorian classic realm when I was very young um, <clears throat> sort of 9, 10, 11 and I was doing that partly because I was just reading lots and lots of books at the time. I read out my school, my primary school library. My grandparents had like all these editions of like leather bound classics. Um, but I literally knew nothing about them. So I would just, I picked up some really weird ones in the end. I know I read Jane and, um, not Jane Eyre, I read Emma and Rebecca. Um, those are two I still remember the content of, but I read a lot of other ones as well. Um, and weirdly, when I was reading Jane Eyre, I read the beginning of this when I was about 10. Um, and I hadn't realised I'd read any of Jane Eyre, um, but it was because I was going through the girls, the girls' names, because there were quite a lot of girls' names. Um, so I was going through them, and I'd also read Tess of the Durbanville. So I was kind of reading, like, the girly names in them. Um, and I'd put Jane Eyre down because the beginning of the, the book is her when she's a child. And I was, like, moving away from children's books at that time, and I got a bit frustrated that I was, I was a book, it's a bit, like... Um, Little Women maybe and I've read that one and I was like I want to be grown up thing but the reason why I was reading all these books was partly that kind of they were there and I didn't really know what they were and that they probably weren't like right for my age right then um, and partly because I was trying to get into this private school that I did get into and get a scholarship there and that was part of that like trying to read the things to impress them and I think classics for me this is what the other video is talking about like the book snobber of it specifically like the Victorian canon um, have been something that I feel are very much things that people used to impress other people um, and I had a big issue with that and I didn't really want to be part of that and I really hadn't like picked up anything of this ilk um, before and I really didn't feel comfortable to, I didn't feel like it was my thing or like I was allowed to go there um, but interestingly like even in me choosing these books now part of it is that Tom did English at uni and he quite often will like jokingly say to me like, I can't believe you haven't read Blur, like Jane Eyre or Wuthering Heights. And it makes me feel bad. <laughs> it makes me feel like, oh, I failed, I'm a reader, but I don't read all the right things. 
Um, and part of me picking these books up was so that he can't say that anymore. So there's no more jokes about me not having read these books. And I thought, I'm just going to read. There's probably like 10 books that he's read that are like the standard classics that I haven't read. Like we've, we've got some crossover. Um, and I thought, I'm just going to read these. And then I'm kind of set. Um, so that was like what started it all. Um, but I actually really did enjoy the books. And I think the thing, I think the thing that is like important to say now is that these really are just books and they're just books they are some of them are similar to the kind of books I read now um, they're just contemporaries set a long time ago um, and I really don't get classic book snobbery I really really don't get it um, I'm glad I've read these because I feel like there's an expectation on me to read those and that's part of what I dislike um, but I, I have this issue, I think, with where there's a selection of books that everyone is supposed to have read. It's like these 100 books to read, you, read before you die kind of lists. And I think I find like a fundamental flaw with those in that, like, say, say The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. So The Tenant of Wildfell Hall um, focuses kind of at its heart on an abusive relationship, on a relationship that someone gets into very young and finds out the person is not the person they want them to be and is completely stuck in this relationship with them being horrid to them the whole way through. For someone who's had an abusive relationship, this may well be like one of the hundred books they might want to read before they die, but another one might not be. Pride and Prejudice may well not have like any impact on them as a person. And the 100 books to read before you die, the kind of literary canon that everyone is supposed to have read, um, I think is completely pointless because like you will find the 100 books that you need to read before you die. That's what books are. There are so many books. There are like whatever it is, like is it like 20,000 books a year published in the UK. Um, there are more books for you than there are like classics that will fit for you. Um, and I'm not slagging off people who really like classics or any of the books I've read, bar Pride and Prejudice. I did like the books that I've read and I don't have a problem with people reading like classics as their like thing. I get that. It's this very specific like style of writing. It feels very comfortable for me. It feels quite cosy, um, though Wuthering Heights less so. Um, but I think there is an issue with feeling pressured to read specific books because they are classics rather than it being like here's a book I liked lots of other people liked it too maybe you might like it like a specific recommendation for a book rather than a set list um, and I think it's like damaged the way I relate to those things and like even now when I'm reflecting on it there's a bit of me that's kind of like maybe I should go and read like as many of these as I possibly can and to an extent to an extent, I want to just reflect on that again, but to an extent that is somewhat practical in that there's a lot of classics on there and I haven't listened to them as new books and I may well listen to some more because of the commuting thing. But there's the other bit of my brain that's like, maybe if you read all of these things, then no one will ever be able to tell you off again for not having read something. But I really don't think the issue is me not having read them. I think the issue is people telling me off for not having read them. Um, I'm not kind of naming names here. But like, okay, so as an example, when I re read these books, I put them on my Goodreads. When I put a Goodreads book as finished, it, I tweet it. So I have my, my Goodreads set up to tweet out my reviews, like my star ratings of the books I've finished. Um, I don't tweet an awful lot and I kind of like, like having that. The people who are following me on Twitter still know kind of what I'm up to. And with two of these books, I think it was two, it might have just been Wuthering Heights, but with, with definitely I have two different people come to me to say like comments in the realm of like, oh, you're late to this one or like, um, surprised you haven't read this one already kind of thing and that is exactly why what my issue is with this and this is what frustrates me is that there is an expectation to have read a set of books um I think that's really about what I want to say because I feel like I'm going a little bit round in circles now um but I do I wanted to watch the video before I talked about this today to see like how much of it I agreed with and I still agree with a lot of what I said like three four years ago when I filmed it in that often I feel like I'm reading these books for other people rather than reading them for myself. It doesn't mean they aren't enjoyable, it doesn't mean that I've not liked the process of reading them, but they're serving a purpose other than the rest of the books that I'm reading. Um, and I think the desire to be like, I will read all of the books that people could say to me, oh I'm surprised you haven't read that, 
would protect me from that and I'd feel like, oh, I can say I have. But the fear is that that turns me into like the same person that I don't want to be of being someone who's read all the books in the list because they have to and is annoyed if other people haven't. Um, I hope that makes sense. I think this, these videos can be quite controversial. The, the older video is one of my videos that pops up quite often for comments, despite its age, if that makes sense. So I think I would still like to continue listening to some classics. I did two Tolstoy's last year and I've done like four Victorian classics this year and it's actually quite nice having a like long cross-stitch project and some classics to listen to um, because the style of those two things kind of fits. Um, I wouldn't want to like cross-stitch to something contemporary, um, it made me feel like a little old lady, but doing it in the context of that kind of book, lots of people are doing things like embroidery so it feels less weird. Um, so I think I'm still going to continue listening to them, but I still can't rid myself of this idea that I'm not really reading them for me at all. I wonder if any of you guys relate, I wonder if any of you guys have the same like barrier when it comes to these specific books and like almost get a little bit affronted by people thinking it's bad that you haven't read them because I definitely do. Cool, so I think that's all for me for today, I hope you're well, look after yourselves until I see you again next and happy reading, bye. Thank you.